Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the reports in the media concerning Starmer's discussions with Maloney about Italy's asylum plans and how Labour could learn from them with what both Starmer and Cooper have actually said in order to work out what is on or off the table when it comes to dealing with particularly small boats issue. Because it has to be said there is one thing that caused the small boats crisis to develop in the first place and only one thing which will ultimately stop it and Labour have been a bit quiet about this aspect of asylum policy. But first, if you'd like to be kept informed on political commentary, please hit the subscribe button. So I think the first thing I would point out is that Italy has a number of asylum schemes implemented or being planned, and Starmer saying that he's interested in seeing what he can learn from them is not a statement that he's interested in copying all of them, or indeed any of them. But there are obvious concerns about how Labour are going to approach the real problems with asylum when the breadth of their plans is lacking in one obvious area. We essentially have two main problems when it comes to public concerns, channel crossings and the consequences of an out of control asylum backlog. In terms of Labour's policies for dealing with some of the asylum issues, there are five. First, crack down on smuggling gangs. All right, fine. Always going to be part of a solution, but it doesn't stop the problem by itself. Second, clearing the backlog in order to end the use of hotels for accommodating asylum seekers. This is good, but deals with the backlog, has no bearing on the small boats issue. Third, reform resettlement routes to stop people being exploited. This basically means improving the system so that asylum seekers with family links in the UK have a safe way to claim asylum. This is good, and it does go some way to dealing with the issue, but only applies to asylum seekers who already have links with the UK already. It does nothing for refugees who have other reasons for thinking the UK is the best place to seek sanctuary. For example, um, Afghans fleeing the Taliban in Afghanistan, you know, they may have, because Britain was active in Afghanistan before we let them back in, may have said, oh, you know, we just claim asylum in Britain. No safe route for them. No safe route for them. So actually, many of the people coming across on the small boats are Afghans, even though even the Tories have to accept that Afghanistan is not a safe place. Fourth policy would be returns agreements. Again, this is for after claims have been processed, so does nothing to deal with the small boats issue. Five, helping to avert humanitarian crises in order to reduce the need for people to flee their homes in the first place. Again, good. Um, never gets any attention from the media. Absolutely should always better to help people feel safe in their own homes than to simply offer them safety elsewhere, prevention better than cure and all that. Absolutely maddening when you've got people saying, oh, we should cut foreign aid. It's like, oh, you want more refugees coming to Britain? Then no, we don't. Well, then we should actually boost foreign aid, then shouldn't we? Huh? But this is another policy. It's part of the solution, um, but it doesn't solve the whole thing. So the elephant in the room really is what Labour do about refugees where we weren't able to stabilise their homes, so they had to flee for, what, environmental disaster, war, or just persecution. They don't have family connections in the UK, but they do have some good reason for thinking the UK is the very place to claim asylum. The lack of any detailed proposal here is why it's natural to cast a suspicious eye at any Labour minister if they're engaging with discussions on asylum solutions with a far-right leader like Maloney. So what are Italy's asylum policies and might Labour be interested in any of them? Well, by far the worst, as I can tell, is the arrangement with Libya. They're taking advantage of the fact Libya is not a signatory of the European Convention on Human Rights. And also it's a government that's not exactly a human rights champion. So Italy pays them to prevent refugees setting off for Italy from their territory. Basically, they have a bit of a deal that the Daily Express keeps thinking we have with France. Not at all. So... Libya will, will actively prevent anyone sort of setting off in small boats towards Italy and intercept any who do before they get out of Libyan waters. Now, from a moral point of view, it's hard to overstate how bad this is. But as immigration lawyer Colin Yeo points out, morals aside, there's no possible practical application for the UK here. We can't copy the scheme because the equivalent country for us is not Libya, it's France. That's where these refugees set off uh, to try and make it to the UK. France is a signatory of the ECHR. Uh, so whenever the Tory media complain that the last government 
paid France to do something to help with the issue and the issue was never actually resolved. It can be put down to a couple of factors. First of all, France doesn't want to deal with the refugees if they're not claiming asylum in France. We weren't paying France to settle them, just run some patrols. Second, France is signed up to the ECHR, so the idea of a dangerous intercept in the channel, for example, out of the question. But the main focus from most of the mainstream media seems to be Italy's Albania model. Now, some in the press are trying to muddy the waters by describing it as being a bit like the Rwanda plan, but it's in Albania instead of Rwanda. Not remotely true. The Rwanda plan involves sending actually quite a small number of asylum seekers, but asylum seekers to Rwanda, they would have their claims processed there. Those who failed would be deported back to their country of origin. Now, if, it was all, if that was all there was to it, it'd be like, it's a really inefficient, messy and, you know, distressing way to deal with it, but okay. But those who successfully claimed asylum wouldn't get to come back to Britain. They would have to remain in Rwanda. Italy's proposal is to send asylum seekers to Albania for processing only. If their claims are successful, they would be brought to Italy and settled. Now, depending on how exactly the scheme works, it could be incredibly expensive. Um, but the political benefits of not accepting asylum seekers into Italy until their claims have been verified is why Maloney has pursued it. Now, I would say Labour would probably be interested in third country processing of claims in theory, but the specifics are unlikely to be what they have in mind, because there's a few reasons why I'm thinking this. First, the Telegraph actually quoted Yvette Cooper saying, the government would look at anything that works. Now, do you just take that out of context? You think, well, that's a wonderful political statement, because it makes people think, well, this, sounds, this scheme sounds like it would work, so therefore Labour are interested in it. But those of us who know it's not at all practical realise she's diplomatically saying, yeah, this isn't for us. And how do I know it's not practical? Because the last Labour government thought of doing exactly this and concluded that it wasn't practical for a number of reasons. So unless Starmer and Cooper think they have an extra cunning plan, this will remain speculation. And apart from anything else, the idea of having a safe way to claim asylum on the way to Britain Actually, the argument is that that just encourages more people to apply for asylum in Britain in the first place. That is not what the government wants. Third country processing in France, you know, might make more sense because they're already there. Uh, the French authorities seem to have no issue with us building facilities there anyway. We could just use it for processing. However, the other thing that Cooper said, she went on to say that anything they look at has to be workable, financially viable and meet international standards which completely rules out the Libya proposal, but we can't do that anyway, but also the Albania proposal, because when she was asked about that specifically, she said there are other ways to develop a fast track system to process claims which don't involve processing deals with a third country. So Cooper seems to be fairly clearly here saying we're not, we're not looking at a solution that involves processing offshore, which is fine. But still, and, and indeed, immigration lawyers would argue that the best way to deal with this anyway is to process the claims in Britain. But it begs the question, so how do we stop the channel crossings? Because remember, this is not an age-old problem. This only began a few years ago. We didn't have this channel crossings issue a few years ago. It, was, it began when the Conservative government began to close down safe routes. If we do not facilitate safe ways to apply for asylum at least in France, if the only way for refugees to seek asylum in the UK is to physically get to the UK, and we provide no safe way to do that, then the demand to cross the channel remains. Can I remind people, because some people have misconception about this, people think, oh, why don't they just get a plane to the UK? They can't. You can't just get a plane to the UK. You have to say what the purpose of your visit is for. And if you say, hey, it's to claim asylum, you go, yeah, you're not getting on this plane. That's not like you need a visa. So you can't, you can't physically just get on a plane or a ferry to the UK. So if you, and, and in terms of like you cracking down the smuggling gang, like you close down one gang, which is difficult enough. I mean, if it was as easy as, oh, we'll just crack the smuggling gangs. Well, why do we have drugs in this country? Like illegal ones. If the answer is, well, we'll just crack, we'll just, we'll just crack the, the drug gangs. Yeah, we tried that. You close down one or a bit of one, another one springs up. If you have the demand, the supply will be there. The same process will apply here. 
the same process will apply. And other will just spring up to fill the niche. You'll have your headlines, oh, we've taken these people to court, put them in prison, these naughty people. Yet more have just come in to fill their gaps. It's the demand that needs to be tackled. Then the supply naturally dries up anyway. The bottom line is that Labour have a clear plan for dealing with the backlog of asylum case in the UK. I don't think I've seen any experts raise concerns on that. But there's a huge hole in their plans for dealing with the other visible sign of asylum problems, the channel crossings. Or at least a hole in their stated plans. It doesn't mean they don't have a detailed plan, just that if they do, they're not sharing it all with us. And it's this simple. Labour will be judged on the small boats issue. If they don't deal with it, they will be inviting more people to think, well, we gave the Tories a chance, they made it worse. Then we gave Labour a chance. Well, they failed as well. So maybe Reform UK are the ones with the answers. That is not a path we want to be going down. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and subscribe as well. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can join for memberships. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.